In my opinion, this week we lost an amazing actor, David Warner. Might not be a household name for everybody. But when I started thinking about David, I started thinking about all of the films and television shows that I recognized him from. And so I wanted to give him a small tribute because I appreciated his work as a kid and a young man. And even though he was in some stuff that I've never heard of, in fact, a lot of stuff that I've never heard of, this video is dedicated to the top 10 appearances that I appreciated David Warner for and I will miss his presence in films and television going forward. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. I refer to this guy as the TGRI guy for like, at least the last two decades. <laughs> uh, and that's what he was to me in this film. But he was the guy that was kind of in control of the ooze and the serum, and he's kind of forced by Shredder to give Toka and Razor the mutagen ooze. And it's a cool plot device. The movie doesn't hold up for me as well as an adult as it did as a kid, but I still loved it either way, and I loved David Warner's performance in this film. Batman, the animated series, and Superman, the animated series. Raz al Ghul. Now this was a really cool character as well. Again, iconic screen representation. Batman, the animated series, is such a cool show from back in the day, and for me has a lot of nostalgia. Most of you know I've been toy hunting for these figures in the six inch scale and now Mondo has some animated series figures coming out in six scale and I'm hoping they make a Ra's al Ghul but I am still searching for the six inch Ra's al Ghul figure and again his presence in the Batman the animated series specifically for me because I watched that one more as a kid as Ra's al Ghul he was fantastic Titanic Spicer Lovejoy now this was a performance that was fantastic, even though I hated the character in this film. I just didn't like him. And I mean, of course, he's kind of antagonistic when it comes to Jack. And, you know, he's obviously on the side of the rich guy. And But when I think about that film, I definitely think about David's performance. And so, it sticks out. It's in the top ten. Star Trek VI the undiscovered country. Chancellor Gorkon. So for my friends and family and fans that like Star Trek, this one resonates with me. The undiscovered country was easily one of my favorite Star Trek films as a kid, and I love Chancellor Gorkon in the role of this Klingon who wants peace between the Federation and the Klingons, and he sets up essentially a meeting with Kirk and Spock and McCoy to try and bring this peace. And he is assassinated. And it's a pretty epic scene. But then Kirk and McCoy end up being put on trial and imprisoned. And the Enterprise crew, they need to help them escape and try and thwart this conspiracy aimed at sabotaging that last best hope for peace and it's an awesome film and again david warner as chancellor gorkon steals the show he is a heartfelt klingon that you want to succeed and seeing him killed is actually heartbreaking in that film and it's definitely a standout performance for me from david tron the 1982 version ed dillinger now the crazy part about this film is i actually didn't see this movie until much later in life this was not one that i saw as a kid but rather an adult uh, in college and i loved the film surprisingly it doesn't age well in parts for sure and some of the special effects are a little cheesy now uh, obviously in comparison it was 1982 let's be honest right but again david warner was a standout character in this film. Scream 2, the drama teacher, Gus Gold. Now this is probably not one of David's standout performances necessarily, 
because the film wasn't received as well as some of the others. However, for me, when I was younger, I used to watch the Scream movies on repeat. And then, of course, as scary movies started to parody them, I lost interest a little bit. But the drama teacher, who is, you know, Sydney's kind of bit of a mentor, I feel like, in that film, adds to character development, brings some gravitas to the acting cast, and is a welcomed addition, in my opinion, in that movie. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, Jor-El. I think what resonated with me as a younger fan was that I wanted all of the Superman content that I could find. And fresh off the heels of watching Smallville, I believe, I ended up picking up seasons back when there was an HMV, <laughs> picked up seasons of Lois and Clark, and sure enough, David Warner plays Jor-El, or Superman's dad, basically, Kal-El's dad. And he does a good job, don't get me wrong, it's not a Marlon Brando performance by any stretch, but it was still a good take on the character, and at the end of the day, it's just another great appearance from a great actor. Star Trek The Next Generation, Gull Madrid. This is easily one of my favorite episodes of Star Trek. It is Chain of Command Part 2. Now, in this episode, Gull Madrid has Captain Jean-Luc Picard captured, and he is torturing him in this room where there are four lights. Now, those four lights are significant for this episode because this episode is all about trying to break the will of Picard, trying to have him acknowledge a lie as truth, and Picard will not do it. In fact, he takes an enormous amount of physical torture and pain while still only saying to Gull every time he's asked, how many lights are there? Picard will say four. Gull's intention is to get him to say five. He wants himself to be seen as that fifth light. Now, at the end of this episode, Picard does admit that he almost admits five lights just to stop the pain and the torture. But it is an extremely powerful episode of Star Trek. And right before the breaking point for Picard, right before... He's rescued. This goes down in history for me as one of my favorite episodes of Star Trek of all time. And of course, David Warner playing this Cardassian character is such a standout that even if you're not a Star Trek fan, I 100% recommend watching the Chain of Command Part 1 and especially Part 2 episode if you get the chance. It should be on the top list for most Star Trek watchers. The Outer Limits multiple appearances. Now this might be aging myself, even though this was the 90s version of The Outer Limits, not the original kind of 60s version. David Warner showed up in multiple episodes, kind of spread out throughout some of these 90s seasons, kind of through season one all the way through to season five. And you never knew when he'd be in an episode, which was kind of cool, but he was just one of those actors that was able to kind of slot into so many different types of characters and really tap in. He wasn't afraid of being a little bit weird and he could also kind of play it cool and be a badass. And so with shows like X-Files, Alfred Hitchcock, The Outer Limits, random shows like Beyond Belief, shows that just added a bit of a supernatural flair element to television and that science fiction network or the sci-fi network on cable back in the day yeah pretty awesome definitely nostalgic for me what about you guys a christmas carol bob cratchit i used to love watching christmas movies at christmas with my family and a christmas carol was a staple in our home Notoriously, Bob Cratchit is the guy who gets the shaft from Scrooge, right? I mean, he just does. He's forced to work, he's forced to make basically no money, he's Tiny Tim's dad, so he's gotta make money, and Scrooge just shits all over this guy. And yet, I will say, <laughs> David plays an excellent Bob Cratchit. So, there's a lot of different iterations of A Christmas Carol. 
Uh, this isn't necessarily my top favorite one by any stretch, but if you happen to watch this one at Christmas this year, keep your eye out for, of course, David Warner. But I'd love to hear from you guys in the chat. Did I miss any standout David films or television appearances that I need to go back and revisit? I won't do this for everybody, but I would say that this actor specifically had an impact on so many memorable movie and television experiences for me as a kid. So many nostalgic offerings that I don't think would be the same content without this gentleman's appearance in those but if you stuck with me till the end, I hope you enjoyed going down the memory lane of some of these past performances. If you like it, just hit it. If not, all good. We will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. And rest in peace, David Warner.